You've built an interesting niche around, uh, yeah, a niche, I would say, in, in a very competitive market. There's, there's all kinds of fitness studios and um, uh, I suppose athlete training centers and there's everything, particularly in this part of the world where, where yeah. you guys are in. But you're focused on a really, really small niche relative to that, which is just speed. Um, it's in the name, Parisi Speed School. What, what, what was the thought process behind that? And is that something that you would recommend people that are thinking about a business to, to kind of really hone in on something and just be the best in the world at it? It's a great question. So when I first started the business, this is like one of those questions we, we give out at the uh, annual Parisi Summit. It's like a quiz question. I'm going to give you the, <laughs> the, the advanced answer here. So when I first started the business, when I first, first started the business back in 92, uh, the name originally, just for a very short while, I'm talking a month, was the Sports Conditioning Institute. How does that sound? Like, what is that? <laughs> you know what I mean? But so, there's quite a few of those around, I think. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There used to be the Sports Training Institute in New York City back in the 70s. They kind of launched personal training. And we said, we're going to Sports Conditioning Institute. And then I had a woman um, that was you know, one of our clients, adult clients. She was in marketing. And she knew our focus was speed training. Uh, you know, and she says, what are you doing? Like, that doesn't make sense. Why don't you just use your name? You have a cool Italian name. Ferrari, Lamborghini, Armani. You know, you have all these you know, Italian names out there, especially with fast cars, right? And uh, pretty cool apparel, right? Uh, you know, use your name. And, and then you say, you know, yeah, the Parisi Speed School, because we educate our athletes, we educate our clients. And that's where, that's where the name was originated. Now, why speed? Well, speed is that one physical attribute that is uh, kind of, you know, mysterious, right? People don't really understand. It's like they don't kind of, back in the early 90s, people thought you can improve speed. There wasn't a lot of research showing that you can improve speed. Uh, but we, we go down the speed route because every field and court sport, the number one physical attribute for success, especially at the younger ages, is speed. There's never a really great standout athlete that's slow, <laughs> right? I've never seen really guys that, so especially at that youth level, 9, 10, 11, 12, the fastest kids are going to play. They might not be the most skilled, but they're going to be on the field. As you get older, as you get to high school level, freshman, varsity, now the skill becomes more important, but you still need to be fast, and it's still a huge factor. As you get into college and pro, now all those guys are fast. Like every, you don't make the team if you're not already fast when you go to college and pro. Like Everyone's fast. So you've got this, we call it the sports skill paradigm. So in sport, you have this foundation of athleticism. The foundation of successful athleticism, this pyramid, right? The foundation of the pyramid, because with a you know, poor foundation, the house falls down, is speed, strength, endurance, flexibility, confidence. You know, all those are the foundation, with speed being the critical foundation. And then as you move up the pyramid, you start to get into sports skill, like how to shoot a basketball, how to dribble, things like that become more important. You know, how, how to dribble a soccer ball. They become, you know, that's the next layer, right? But if you create that foundation of speed and strength and confidence, because to get faster, why we use speed? Speed is like people can relate to it. You know, oh yeah, speed. My kid needs speed. Yeah, speed, of course. But how do you get faster? Well, you, number one way to get faster, you gotta get stronger. So you gotta get the right muscle stronger. And the number, you know, number one and number two, hand in hand, you got to get stronger, you got to learn technique. So you learn, you get stronger the right way for speed and you learn running mechanics, you're going to get faster. And as you get older and as you progress in your training age, you know, uh, increases with training, now you got to get that more dialed in. You know, then there's, there's, you know, force velocity curves and there's things that, you know, speed strength, strength speed. Um, there's things that we do now to manipulate you know, the, uh, the power output. So, but but at, at the end of the day, speed, athletic performance, athleticism, jumping ability, it really comes down to the ability to generate force quickly. Rate of force development, 
and max force development. So how fast you can create a, a big force. So how high I can jump is directly determined how fast and how much force I can put into the ground. If I wanna run this way really fast, I gotta get force going into the ground this way really fast. So it's angular uh, angles of force, force vectors, and the rate of force and the amount of force. So that's really the essence of all athleticism is, is the ability to create force quickly, lots of force real quickly, whether it be into a, into a ball, if I'm a martial artist, into a punch, you know? I mean, we talk a lot about martial arts and people say, uh, you know, why would I bring my seven-year-old into a speed school? I want them just to enjoy sports. Of course, we want them to enjoy sports. So how do you enjoy sports? Well, not sitting on the bench <laughs> and being, you know, you know, being kind of good at it, right? I'll, unfortunately, a lot of kids in sports don't enjoy sports because coaches are out of their mind uh, and they're like ragging on kids and kids aren't participating or as much as they want and they're not the star. I mean, just to feel part of the team. Well, how do you get off the bench on the field? Well, learn how to generate force quickly into the ground so you can run faster. And how do you do that? Well, if I have a five-year-old kid, you wouldn't think twice bringing them into a martial arts class. Like there's a Taekwondo studio down the street. Yeah, I'm gonna bring my kid there for confidence. Great, it's, it's great. Now what do you do? The kid starts out as a white belt in martial arts and he looks like this, right? And he's like his first day, he's, and he's like this punchy, he's happy, he's feeling confident. And now he has a belt test, right? He's a white belt, now he wants to go and get his, his orange belt. So now he's looking like this, he's looking a little bit better. And he, when he gets his orange belt. If you go to a martial arts class three days a week for a couple of years, now you're starting to get up there, you know, maybe a red belt, you know, purple, brown, black. Now all of a sudden the kids are like this, boom, 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 right? That's a lot different than this. Now, what did that kid do for three years? Worked on movement mechanics. Did he lift weights? Did he do crazy? He did push-ups, he did body weight strength, and he learned how to generate force quickly through his hand, through his feet. We do the same exact thing at the Parisi Speed School. We're not trying to put force into an opponent, we're trying to put force into the ground at different directions to optimize our ability to accelerate, decelerate, run multi-directions, multi and run at maximum velocities. So it just, there are many forms of martial arts, right? Um, Gracie family came up with their own art, right? Well, there's an art to speed. We came up with a way to deliver it, just like a martial arts grandmaster developed a system to teach a different martial art. There's many different forms, Taekwondo, Gracie Jiu Jitsu, there's uh, Muay Thai, all these forms of martial art. Speed training is an art. We have a system to teach it. And the way an athlete can improve their martial arts ability, you can improve speed and athleticism. It's movement literacy, it's force development, rate of force development and movement literacy. Isn't that martial arts? It's movement literacy and rate of force development. Do you get kids doing martial arts in here just to help them understand and to, and to be faster at all? Yeah. I know you do some UFC stuff. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's more of the adult <laughs> stuff that we've done in the past, um, you know, with our colleague Martin Rooney when, when he was here uh, and his training for Warriors program. But I think what, what we, you know, we focus here really is, is really developing uh, our athletes on the field. We, we, you know, we really focus on um, the, the martial athlete. You know, like really creating that athlete that's really dialed in and, and uh, understanding movement. And, and that's a big part. We call ourselves the Parisi Speed School because it's built on education, like teaching the athlete, you know, the fundamentals of movement, you know, movement literacy, or we call their motor vocabulary, right? Just like when you bring someone in, in the gym to use your equipment, there's techniques on how to move that load, right? Well, the load is our body, so we want to know how to master and teach that, that movement. Right. When you started, what year was it started? 1992 was the official, uh, you know, was the official you know, incorporation of our business out of the van, and then 93 we opened our first facility. Right. You talk about your business is really education. What was the, what, what was it that you were learning and that the, the conversation was going with, sim, sim, with your peers back in 1992 um, where was people's awareness about the human body, about speed? And, and are many of those principles still true today? And, and we'll go on to some of the, the fascist stuff in, in, in a moment, but ha, ha, are those principles still sound and we're still using a lot of that? Or has there been a major shift over that period, which is sort of you know, nearly 30 years now in terms of what people are teaching, what you're teaching, and, and how you go about what you do? 
These are really great questions. I mean, this man is so well prepared, right? He's not only always well dressed, and even his sweatsuit is like, you know, cutting edge. Like he has these things that look kind of cool. That that ring is new, isn't it? Or is that that's a new my ring? aura ring, bro? Yeah. Oh, it's, oh, it's an aura ring. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, it's, it looks good. <laughs> Uh, just such great, great questions um, uh, in terms of, you know, the history. You know, it's ironic. No, our system hasn't changed much. And what's caught up was now the science has proven our system. All right. That was amazing. And it's so cool. Uh, I will say in the early days, there's a story. I was cold calling coaches here to get them involved in our program. And I called a, a famous coach. This was 30 years ago. He's been coaching for 40 years. And this coach I called just won his 300th game. He's been coaching for 40 years. He's the most successful, one of the top three most successful coaches in New Jersey football history. And uh, I called him up. I was new in the area. This was, you know, probably 27 years ago. And I'm saying, I, you know, looking to help your team improve speed. He's like, what? Who? Uh, you're a charlatan and hung up. You know, he hung up on me. Like, just boom. You just thought, you know, yeah, you can't improve speed. This is some guy trying to sell snake oil, right? <laughs> and, uh, I mean, that, that kind of set me back emotionally. Like, oh, wow, that was hard. But I kept plugging away, plugging away. Believed in our system. Had a free clinic where coaches came. He happened to come. He was actually saw what we did, was kind of impressed. And then we wound up training his, his, his son and daughter along with his team. And um, I share that because the, uh, uh, the research is caught up with what we've been doing. Because, again, when you think of martial arts, they've been around for thousands of years. What are you trying to do in, let's just use Taekwondo. What are you trying to do in Taekwondo? Generate lots of force through your fists and through your feet into an opponent and also blocking and, and moving quickly. We are the same thing. And, and athleticism is all about rate of force development. You know, how fast you can create force and how much force you can apply into the ground at the right angle to move your body a certain way. And that, that will never change. And our whole program has been built around movement literacy. Now, the science has, has, has validated speed can be improved through in getting stronger. Like, we know that from the research. If you get stronger, you're going to get faster. But now, recently, in the last 10 years or so, we've proven that there's a cap to strength. Like, once you reach a certain strength level, you know, it's not necessarily going to get you faster. So we've, you know, seen about two times your body weight in the squat. You know, if you get, if you can hit two times your body weight, 1.8 for women, if you can hit that number in the squat, uh, the back squat, parallel, you, you probably have enough strength and you don't need more strength to get faster. You need now the ability to uh, recruit that strength at faster speeds and you need to, you know, harness that strength in a way with better technique and you need to improve your force vectors into the ground technique, you know, applying force and how your body applies force. So if I want to generate a lot of force with my right arm into an opponent or break the wood the teacher is holding, you know, I'm not just going to use my right arm. I'm going to brace my body. I'm going to use my opposite side to, to you know, um, counter my punch. And there's a lot of things going on in this structure to maximize force. Well, the same thing when I run and I, I accelerate, the same thing is going on. I got to create proximal uh, core stiffness to create distal speed. You know, I've got to understand uh, in the gym, you know, rate coding and, and how to generate high motor unit recruitment and how to create pulses of stiffness in the body because speed is around creating uh, milliseconds of stiffness followed by relaxation. So uh, there's a lot of skill to being able to, you know, run fast because every time your foot strikes the ground, you want to be stiff, but in milliseconds, you need to be relaxed like as soon as your foot comes off the ground. So we're talking for world-class sprinters, eight hundredths of a second. For your average high school kid, we're talking about eleven hundredths of a second, you know, a tenth of a second, that they need to create a pulse of stiffness and strength. And that strength has to turn on and turn off really quickly. That's a skill. Hmm. You know, that's a skill. And knowing, knowing what that means and how to do that, the fascist system plays a big role in that. Co-contractions <laughs> play a big role in that. In that, in that athleticism of, of milliseconds of, of, of contractions and stiffness and co-contractions create this dynamic athleticism that we want. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of you know, understanding and training that goes around that. You know, I'm getting pretty deep here and I'm packing a little bit, but, but we keep it simple for the athlete mm. on, on how to, how to you know, attain that kind of athleticism. So it's, yeah, you need some weight room strength, but I think in our country, especially in the college level, it's become an arms race where they just have all these tons of uh, squat racks and whatnot. 
that's part of it. We've overdone it, though, I you know, feel, in, in, in the sports performance industry in terms of sagittal plane movements, squat, deadlift, you know, lunge, you know, uh, front squat, you know, all these, dead, all these sagittal plane movements you, you can easily overdo quickly uh, and lose that athleticism or that speed. Mm -hmm.